Hello and welcome to Flying Bobbins. I'm Liz and today I am going to talk you through how to make your very own Breton stripe t-shirt. I'm going to be using the wardrobe by me fitted t-shirt pattern and as you can see you've got lots of different variations in the pattern that you can choose from and I'm going to be using a lovely black and white stripe cotton jersey fabric from Art Gallery Fabrics. It's a lovely, lovely quality. Now I'm going to take you step by step through each of the processes needed to make this uh, t-shirt today. If you fancy sewing along with me and making your very own Breton stripe t-shirt, then you can buy a kit from flyingbobbins.com containing everything you need, including the pattern, the fabric, and a fabulous choice of colors and the thread. So you can make this amazing wardrobe staple for yourself as well. The first thing that you're gonna to want to do is to wash your fabric. It's always a good idea to wash fabric before cutting out and making, just to eliminate any possible shrinkage. And I would suggest washing at 30 degrees on a short spin and then hanging up to dry. So if you haven't already done so, pop your fabric on to wash. Now the next thing that we're going to do is to look at the pattern itself. So when you open up your envelope, you're gonna have inside your instruction booklet and one sheet of A0 with all of your pattern pieces on it. Now the first thing that you're gonna to want to do is to figure out which size to make. So you should measure your bust, waist and hips and what I like to do is just circle where I am on that measurement chart. And pretty typically, I am between sort of an eight bust and a 10 um, on the rest of my body. So that's kind of what's showing up there as well with this pattern. Um, and this pattern goes from a 30, which is a 76 centimeter or 30 inch bust, up to a size 54, which is a 124 centimeter or 48 inch bust there. So it's quite a wide um, choice of sizes. Now once I've kind of figured out what size I'm going to do, I'm going to have a look at which style I want. And you will see that the special thing about this pattern is that you've got all of these choices. So you've got sleeve length, full length, bracelet length, short sleeve, elbow length sleeve, mid Oh, I suppose this would be called a cap sleeve and that would be called a short sleeve. So you've got all those different sleeve lengths. All you can do it sleeveless. And then you've got a choice of different necklines as well. Boat neck, an O neck, which is this kind of scoop, a V neck, a C scoop or a low C scoop. So you can choose um, which style to mix. You've also got two body lengths, standard, or you've got this kind of um, curved body um, hem as well. And I think there's about 90 combinations that you can make with this pattern. So you kind of have a think about with your Breton stripe t-shirt or if you're making a printed jersey t-shirt or whatever you're using, you know, have a think about what style you want um, to make, what's going to suit you. And of course you can use this pattern over and over again. So once you've got it, you can make loads of different styles of t-shirt. Um, and the world is your oyster. I mean, it's so easy to make as well, which is great. So here, let's have a look at the pattern. It's a bit like, ah, when you first open it because you've got all these different pieces. So what I like to do to begin with is just to rough cut round the edge and then lay everything out so I can get my head round it. So I'm gonna do that now. I've cut out all the pieces. I'm finding it a bit clearer to get my head round the pattern because you have got quite a lot of pieces here. And the reason why is because of all those different options that you've got to choose from. So I've kind of put them in their category. So over here, we've got all the different top halves that you can choose from. And you've got the, the backs and the fronts together. So if I was making the boat neck, I've got a picture of the boat neck on this one, and you can see that you've got the scooped out boat neck there. So that's the back and the front of the boat neck style. And then on this pattern piece, I've got the back and the front. And this is if I wanted to make the scoop neck, or what they call an O neck, or the V neck, O neck or V neck. And you can see you've got your O neck picture and your V neck picture. And that's the back there with just a, a scoop at the back. And then at the front, you have the choice of either cutting the V or cutting around the curve there to make your O neck. And then the final choice here, the back 
and the front of the C neck or the what we call a scoop neck and you've got a uh, two options here you've got the high up scoop or you've got the low down scoop and then there's the back that matches up with that one so you've got six no five different necklines low scoop high scoop crew neck v neck and boat neck so whichever you're going to use to you know decide on which style you want to make and then you can choose the pattern pieces now I want to make the O neck, which is this one here, which I would also call a crew. So I'm going to take these other neckline styles and move them out of the way just for the second. And I'll keep them nice and tidy in my pattern envelope because I'm sure that I shall make this more than once and I want to have a go at all the different styles eventually. So I'm definitely going to use these two pieces here, which are the, um, the pattern pieces for that O neck or crew neck. And then you've got this pattern piece here, which is the lower body. And this is the same for the back and the front. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your top part, join it along that line, and then you're going to cut out, and then you're going to take your top part, join along that line, and then cut out. And the reason why is if, if you ever look at a t-shirt, it's pretty much the same on the back and front, sort of below here. It's only, the only areas that are different are the armhole shaping and sort of the shoulder and the scoop or the, the front and back. So really the body itself is the same back and front. So though, that's my back and front body. And then finally here I've got my sleeve. And as you can see, you can just cut it to whichever length you want to make and of course I'll keep the remainder because then I can sellotape it back on and make it again or if you're somebody who likes tracing then of course you can just trace off these pattern pieces but I hate tracing <laughs> I'm too impatient so I've, I'm just gonna chop it and then I'll sellotape it back together again when I want to make a different one or you could probably even fold it actually to be honest with you but I'm gonna make the elbow length so I'll be cutting along this line so the next thing that I want to do is I think it's going to be helpful for me to just highlight uh, where I'm cutting because each of these different lines on this pattern, this is a multi-size pattern, so each of these different lines represents a different size and you've got your table here to help you. So it says size 30 is the straight line, that's the smallest one, right up to size 24 or 54 which is another straight line at the side there and I think I said that I'm a 38 up to a 40 or a 36 up to a 38 something along these lines so I'm just going to go back double check my measurements and then what I find it's helpful to do is to grab a highlighter pen and just to trace around the line that you're going to cut because then when you're cutting it's just nice and easy now the other quick thing that we're going to have to decide as well is do I want to do this shaped length here where it comes down or do I want to do the length B which is just a, a straight hem. And I think I probably fancy the straight hem actually so I'm going to cut round length B but if you fancy doing the shaped one you would just cut round this length A line here. And again keep that spare bit of fabric so that you, spare bit of paper rather so that you can sellotape it back on again. So if you're undecided about what, which um, size to go for, a good bit of advice from me is to try some t-shirts on from your wardrobe, see how they fit, choose something that is similar in fabric to what you're going to be working with, and then take your t-shirt off, fold it in half, and lay it on top of your pattern just to see how that sizes up against your pattern. So I'm going to take you back over to my cutting table, show you my, um, my pattern and talk you through how to do that. Hey Puss Puss, are you joining us? So the first thing that I want to do is I'm just going to take the top part of my top and the bottom part of my top and join them together. And I'm just going to put some masking tape on there. Now if you're a little bit on the tall side or if you're a little bit petite, 
it actually says to you that you can shorten or lengthen at this point. And what that means is that you can slide this up and put in a bit of paper here to make that pattern piece longer. Thank you, Kira. Or you can slide this down to shorten. Okay, and that's if you, you know, if you know that you're more petite, you can shorten the pattern or lengthen it at that point. And on page four of your book, you've actually got the garment measurements listed there. So it gives you length A and length B, the finished length. So you can just measure that up against yourself to decide whether that is gonna be okay for you or if you want to just lengthen it or shorten it by a few centimeters. Now I'm just gonna demonstrate to you. I haven't cut down to size yet, but I just want to stick these pieces together and just don't, oh, you sat on my t-shirt, thank you. <laughs> All the places, excuse me. I'm gonna use a bit of masking tape. I like masking tape because you can draw on it and also it comes off easily and doesn't rip the paper, whether it's using um, regular sellotape would kind of rip the paper a little bit. I'm just gonna match those lines up. See how easily that comes off if you need to adjust it. But Stacey, there we go. So I'm just going to pop that there just for just for the sec, just to get the idea. And so this is the center front, this line here. So if I get my t-shirt, you might want to even give your t-shirt a press and give your pattern piece a press to be really accurate, but I'm gonna just very quickly do it like this. I'm gonna fold my t-shirt in half. Make sure that it's all nice and flat. Make sure that the underarm seams there are matching. And then I can just place the center front of my t-shirt on that center front line there and match up that underarm with the underarm of the pattern. And I can just get a rough idea of how my shop bought t-shirt that I know I like the fit of compares with the pattern. Um, so you can just play about a bit, just make sure that it's nicely laying down. I'll move those sleeves out of the way because they're a bit fancy, I'll just fold them out of the way. And I can see that this, this line here kind of matches up with this plain black unbroken line there. The other thing that you can see from looking at this as well is that the length on here is actually more similar to length A. So thinking about that, I might actually go for length A, but what I might do is do the straight one. Um, of course, what you've got to remember as well is that the seam allowance is included on this pattern. So by the time I've pressed that hem up, this is going to be about the same length and I really like the length of this top so I'm actually probably going to go for length A having looked at that now but I'm going to do straight not curved and then I can just think to myself well this pattern includes a um, 0.6 centimeter seam allowance um, it's a seam allowance that's smaller than you'd find on a woven pattern and that's because it's really designed to be made you know, either on a serger, an overlocker, or made, you know, made with a stretch stitch on your sewing machine, and you don't need a lot of seam allowance. So I can see as well from comparing this shop bought t-shirt that I like the fit of, that this is a lot of a straighter fit, whereas this is a lot more contoured. So this is gonna suck in a little bit, whereas this one is a lot straighter. But it's just gonna, by comparing my own shop bought t-shirt with the, um, the paper pattern and obviously I haven't cut this paper pattern down to size yet this is all of the sizes that you can see coming all the way up here um, but just by comparing that I can kind of think to myself um, right yes that does seem like the right size for me to make or maybe it will make you think actually I want to go slightly bigger or slightly smaller you can look at length as well and you can just kind of think well actually I like the way that fits so that's how that's what I'm going to go for there what do you think Kira is it good advice Yes, yes. So there you go. That's how, if you're unsure, because it's a bit different with stretch patterns, with knit patterns like t-shirts, because 
you're dealing with negative ease as well, so it's not very um, easy to just measure the pattern and hold it up against yourself because you're dealing with, you know, working with stretch knits. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> How rude! <laughs> held my t-shirt up that's helped me decide looking at this um, I'm going to make a size 38 I'm actually going to highlight that because it's going to help me if I ever come back to this pattern but I know that that was good if you want to you can even write the date on it because obviously our bodies change shape quite a lot throughout time especially after lockdown or at Christmas times like that and so I was sort of 36 38 but I'm just going to go for 38 because that seemed to match up with my t-shirt now 38 is the unbroken line so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight it and I find that really helpful for what you know before I start cutting out whoops it just sort of helps me they're not being accurate um, but it just when I'm cutting out and look at this bit here under the arm with all these different lines it's a bit dazzling you do it with a highlighter first then you reduce the chance of scissor accidents cutting through your pattern on the wrong line so I just like to go through with patterns like this where they've got lots of different sizes and then I can see I've got my notch there so I can highlight that I'm going to do the straight hem I'm going to highlight a straight line there so I don't get confused obviously I've got my center front line there that's going to be cut on the fold but I do need to cut that piece of paper there and then it's given me the option of a v-neck but I'm not going to do the v I'm going to do the scoop and that is that straight line there they're all really close together and then they all merge into one there it comes back up to me there so I've got my lovely highlighted pink outline that I'm going to cut and I'm going to do that with all of the pattern pieces and then I'm going to cut them out Okay, so we're getting there. I've cut out my sleeve for elbow length and then I've sellotaped my front top part of my bodice to my bodice body and I've cut that straight hem there. And then what I'll do is I'll cut that out and then I will attach the top part of the back and I'll cut that out. So it's the same bottom half for both the back and front. And those are both cut on the fold. Now the last thing that we're going to need is the neck band. And this is just a rectangular pattern piece. They don't give you the pattern piece because it is just simply a strip. They've given you this table here, which is going to tell you how long you want your strip to be. So you've got your um, imperial measurements at the top, and then you've got your metric measurements and I'm going to work with metric measurements and I know that I'm making the O neck which is this one here the, what I would call a crew neck or a high scoop um, an O neck so that I know that it's going to be four centimeters wide I'm going to highlight this to remind myself so I know it's got to be four centimeters wide and then it says times by and then it gives you how many centimeters long that strip needs to be dependent on the size that you've cut and I've cut a size, what they call a size 8, remembering that these are American sizes, not UK sizes, so it's about 10 or 12. And for the O neck, I therefore need my strip to be 46 centimetres long. So 4 centimetres by 46 for the size 8. I've actually got some dot and cross pattern paper. And you can buy this from More Plan. I've got a great big roll of it and it's very useful. But if you don't have anything like this, then you could use a roll of old wallpaper. You could just use um, a couple of sheets of A4 stuck together. You could use some grease proof paper, it's great for pattern cutting, or you can buy pattern cutting tissue paper as well. So I'll start off just by drawing a straight line. And then I want four centimeters wide, so I'll measure up four centimeters and draw a line there and then it's got to be what did we say 46 so I'll just measure down 46 from there and then I'm going to just draw a line there at the 46 centimeters so there is my rectangle there um, which is 46 centimeters long by 4 centimeters wide 
and I can just write on here W B T um, T shirt size eight O neck. So that if I find that pattern piece in my envelope, I'll know what it's for.